Hey sports fans, Haroon Rashid, Kemia Consulting, and welcome to Haroon's Hangout, the internationally featured show where we make digital marketing simple, straightforward, and fun. Today, the brain science behind content marketing with Mr. John Hayden. We're so happy to have John back on the show. Uh, he came on the show, I think, in December last year. And uh, we're just so happy that he's back with us. If you don't know John, then you need to seriously uh, get online and check him out. He is the author of Facebook Marketing for Dummies, and he is the founder of Inbound Zombie. And he just knows a lot, and I mean a lot, about digital marketing, social media, and he has a real niche for nonprofits and charities. Welcome back on the show, John. We missed you. I missed you too. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> on the How other about side of the pond. <laughs> How about those Red Sox, eh? Spring oh, yeah. Yep. Already. yep, yep. Actually, the past week I was consumed with, uh, with the Olympics. I thought that was much more interesting, personally. <laughs> and I just lo I love the Olympics where different countries get together, and it's the one place where there's so much hope and peace. It's the one moment around the world where there's a lot of hope and peace and people challenging each other and overcoming differences. I, I love that. I'm much more interested in that. I mean, baseball's great. Don't get me wrong. And I love the Red Sox, number one baseball team in the world. Um, <laughs> but the Olympics are great, man. I love the Olympics. Absolutely. We like people coming together and overcoming differences. Always a good thing. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get you back on the show today to talk about uh, the brain science behind content marketing. Uh, us at Chemia, we do a lot of the neuroscience stuff, uh, but it, it's so great to get someone else on the show uh, who uh, does this and has a lot of great content out there. So I thought what we would do is we'd probably talk about what is content marketing first of all, because mm -hmm. in the UK we're a bit further behind when it comes to content marketing. It's not a phrase that we use as often as mm -hmm. yourselves in the US. So once we've established what content marketing is, we can then go into the neuroscience, the brain science, uh, how businesses can mm -hmm. use that. And we also have this thing called the Chemia Workout. So maybe at the end, uh, we like to encourage people to do at least one thing uh, that they can implement straight away. So maybe you can tell us what that one thing could be, what you want the audience to do. Does that sound OK? Perfect. Yep. Awesome, awesome. So John, could you please give us a definition? What is content marketing? Um, well, content marketing, is, the way that I think about it is it's when you, as a business, uh, publish content online that's useful. The key phrase is useful, okay? Uh, because before, uh, you know, and uh, you know, going back a while before social media and, and, and a lot of internet stuff, you, you might just have a website and here's our products and information you can buy a click here and that's it. But not many companies were really engaging uh, their customers online and of course today with blogging and Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest, essentially every company is involved in this. So, Content marketing is a way to um, initially engage potential customers. So the way that it works is the content has to be super useful right out of the gate, okay? In other words, you're giving away some sort of advice or service or how-to or something that's truly valuable on its own, okay? That you know, potential customer doesn't have to do business with you in order to get the value out of that content. That content's out there. With, for free uh, with a lot of value in it. Number two, it has to be relevant to the audience. So this involves like doing tons of research. Who are my customers? Where are they? What do they talk about? What's important to them, right? The whole with them question, you know, with them, what's in it for me? Everybody's a selfish person. We're all, we're also very generous people. <laughs> That's why we all get along in many cases. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, uh, but so 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 people are always thinking that on the internet. You know, they're like searching Google. They search on Google. I I have to figure out how to get rid of the fleas in my dog. How do I do that? What's the best way to get do that? And they they'll do a search and they might find an, maybe an ebook, but at least a blog post. And that itself is useful content. That in that example, that animal shelter. Let's say um, they know that they know their customers. They hate when their dogs get fleas. <laughs> Let's help them solve that problem for free, okay? Then, while they're reading that blog post, wow, so much other great stuff. Maybe they have an email list I can join, 
and then maybe down the road I might buy a product or make a donation or whatever it might be. So content marketing is that initial engagement that's highly focused on creating value for the potential customer. And that's really good because I think the tendency for businesses particularly when they start to create content is that they would just talk about themselves rather than solving the problems and needs of the customer. Uh, so, I mean, mm -hmm. you must have seen it so many times as well where if they're ever going to do a video, it will be a promo video and it will just talk about themselves mm -hmm. and not really about the customers. Well, I love the phrase that you used about being super useful uh, mm -hmm. and solving the problems and needs and, um, you know, making it all about the customer. So, what uh, do you... What do you Let me add just a quick, quick, quick little tip here. Just for everybody, <clears throat> you, everybody should go out and buy this book. It's called Utility, Y-O-U-T-I-L, you know, Utility, Utility, yeah. Utility, by Jay Baer, B-A-E-R. It's, it's all about content marketing. It's basically everything you need to know. I would highly recommend that book. Excellent. And if you're watching this, by the way, uh, please uh, know that we do have some show notes that will be available on the blog, so we're going to put that book in the show notes. Thanks for that, John. Yep. Um, so... <clears throat> What do you think are the key elements of some really compelling content? What is going to make something like a kind of content? Because I think a lot of people can create useful stuff, but what is it about um, certain bits of content that just kind of rise above the digital noise in your eyes? Yeah, so there's a couple things. One is, it's really interesting, there are two types of content. Either it has to be very broad and deep, okay? So, for example, a blog post that is... 5,000 words that says something like um, everything of Facebook marketers need to know for 2014 or maybe even everything you could ever ever need about Facebook and that that's a huge article it might be 5,000 words okay so it's broad the other type that's more common I think is is highly specific okay so right now you know and there's almost like a maturity curve that content follows on the internet so there might be a new topic when Twitter first came out all you have to do is write a blog post. How to use Twitter. Boom. Done. You're right at the top. You're at the top of the heap. Then as more and more people talk about that same topic, it's harder to differentiate your blog post. So then you have to be more specific, right? So how to use Twitter on a Sunday morning to attract new customers. That's much more specific, okay? Um, and it's also, it cuts through the noise. When people are searching for that information online as well, they find a lot of articles, how to use Twitter and this and that. Of course, Google really does a lot to really push up the most relevant, the most highly specific content at the top. So specificity is a, is a critical part of, of successful content. Um, I would say the second element on top of that would be the headline. Headline, hands down, is probably the number one thing that's going to be the tool of the, of the article or the piece of content because that's what people notice first. That's what they share. In fact, a lot of people retweet stuff on Twitter without even reading it. They just go on the title alone. So the title is a critical element to get that content spread. You know, I'll stop right there, but those are my no, initial thoughts. Absolutely. And um, I would imagine that the more successful content marketers, and I think you've already alluded to this, but I think this might actually be a nice transition into the, the neuroscience stuff, is that this will require you to have a very good understanding of who your customer is or your buyer mm -hmm. persona. Would you like to talk mm -hmm. to us a bit about that, understanding your customer? Understand, are we going to talk about that or the brain science thing? Understand your customer? Yeah, let's do yeah. that first. Let's do that first. Okay, well, why don't we talk about that in the context of brain science because it might fit in a little bit better. We can just jump right into the brain science thing. Let's, let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. clears throat> so um, it went, before our, our hangout, I was thinking, Man, I'm so excited we're talking about brain science. And then I was like, man, you're such a geek. Why are you so interested in brain science? And I realized I, since a little kid, since a little boy, I was always curious, why do people do the things that they do? I've always had this curiosity of just about people, right? Why did that person murder his mother? Or why did that person from this country marry this beautiful woman here and, you know, move away from his home permanently. Whatever, whatever the situation is, I've always been curious about why people do what they do. And so my career has been in marketing, right? And then now, um, you know, my career, as, as yours is, is really about, uh, you know, this, this environment where things change like that. Twitter, Pinterest, what's up? Who the hell? I didn't know what's, what what's up was until, what, two weeks ago, right? 
I mean, I heard of it, but I, it wasn't really on my radar. All of a sudden, what's up is here. Facebook is acquiring for $16 billion. That's insane. You know, that's not investment advice, by the way, just for the <laughs> record. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, so it changes so rapidly. So, and I feel like um, what we have that is reliable is human behavior. So human behavior, the reason why I like brain science is because the brain itself hasn't really changed in at least, or and how we relate to people hasn't really changed in at least 30,000 years, okay? And I'm not, a, I don't know, there's, a, I don't, you know, we can get into the whole discussion about how, how old is uh, humankind, but um, there is a, a cave in France, just as an interesting fact, many people might already know this, but it's a cave in France, it has cave paintings that are 30,000 years old, like these wow. stories and cave paintings all over the place, proving that human culture, as we know it, with art and with culture and with ideas and with people and communities, these have existed for at least 30,000 years in, in similar ways that, that we do today. And there are some fundamental elements, like, um, and, and now going back to knowing your customer, right? The reason why you have to know your customer is because that's how we operate as a species. I have to trust you before I'm going to get close to you, okay? Evolution dictates this. By the way, <laughs> the brain that we have in our head was created hundreds of thousands of years ago running away from a, a you know, saber-toothed tiger, <laughs> right? So we're, you know, this stuff is hardwired. It's part of our evolutionary path. So it's the, the, what I love about brain science and um, marketing is that it says that the human being never changes. There are some fundamental aspects of human beings that will never change, or they, they may, but they may change in, say, 30,000 years from now. So we have, you know, you know, you're talking about something that won't change. So trust, right? The idea of attention, like what is going to get someone's attention, right? Um, and there are, you know, for example, uh, and there's a book on this, by the way. Seth Godin wrote a book called The Purple Cow, and you, you may know this book, but yep. The Purple Cow, just for everybody else, it's a book about um, getting people's attention, basically. And the story that opens up the book is Seth Godin is driving with his family. They're in the Midwest somewhere. They see cows all over the place. The kids are excited because they never see cows before, and they're saying, geez, look at all the cows all around the place. This is amazing. They keep driving. Of course, the roads in the Midwest are very straight, so it's very boring. Eventually, the cows really, they're still there, but they disappear. The people, the family stops noticing the cows until they start, they're driving and they see a purple cow. Then, oh, their attention is renewed again. So it's almost like um, attention works in a way where if people see the same thing over and over and over again, the same messages from all these people, from different brands, from different nonprofits, it really becomes invisible. And what is effective is when you come along and say, hey, this thing that everybody's talking about, we're going to turn it right on its head for you in a totally new way. That's getting attention, and that works. Uh, from Because we, are, we depend on that. We, we depend, our very survival depends on the fact that we can notice something that's different, that's not quite right in our environment. Because if it's not quite right, it might rip my head off and have it for dinner, right? So I have to be really focused on the smallest differences and know, well, this stuff is not really important because it's I've seen it all the time and I'm reading it all the time, you know, for blogs. But, th oh, this is different. Something that's different about this. So we're, we're you know, we're very hardwired to ca to kind of, you know, notice things that, that are different and that are in contrast. Um, there's a book um, called The Impact Equation by Chris uh, Brogan. You probably know that book, The Impact yes. Equation. Yes. Yeah, excellent book. Chris Brogan, Julian Smith, by the way, who's the less famous of the two, but I would think, yeah, I think he's at least as smart as Chris Brogan, maybe a little bit smarter, I don't know. But anyhow, that's a great book, and it talks about this idea of contrast, you know, your stuff in contrast to the rest of things, you know, and, get, and how that works in getting people's attention, so... Brilliant, and I think that's very, very um, apt because we're talking about trying to stand out in a digital universe where everybody is trying to vie for your attention, and it's how do you <laughs> throw in a purple cow, if we're going to use that analogy, so that you can 
stand out from everybody mm. else. What kind of things do you think people can do then uh, to capture the attention of, of you know, capture the attention of, um, uh, capture our attention using these kind of brain science techniques? What are mm -hmm. some of the things we can do? Okay, well, so, so the first thing to understand what's important to the people. Wh who are you, who's your ideal customer? Not the one in your dreams, the one that actually paid your money last month. The, per, the customer that consistently shows up and pays their bills all the time, that's your ideal customer. It's not the one that oh, we wish we had these people. People that are paying you are your, <laughs> are your customers. Sorry, <laughs> that's who they are. So the more you can get to know those people and make them really happy, the better. And you have to understand what are their motivations. So uh, really the, the deeper part is not, um, well, let's give them like a new Facebook app. That, this is not a strategy, by the way. Okay. Well, you know, let's come up with this cool Facebook app because we found this tool and it's a great tool and it's cheap and it's a cool thing. It does this cool thing on Facebook. That is not at all as important as understanding what are the emotions, what really keeps people up at night, what's important to them, and what are your competitors not giving them? What, how are they not being served and how can you do that? How can you do that for free with, with your content, right? Because I think that's the first starting point is to really understand your people and the competitors and understand, uh, I guess they call it a SWOT analysis, you know, understand what your uh, opportunities are in this situation mm -hmm. and, and how you can really be, you know, differentiate yourself in that way. That's the first part. So it's like identifying what are the pains, what are the problems that they have. Hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. And, and often, often it's really not that clear either. You know, I remember I worked with a, an organization and they were really struggling with content on Facebook about cerebral palsy, about talking about how really horrible it is and all this stuff. And, you know, I was talking to this, this um, board member and they, turns out, the board member has, a, has a, a, a daughter and then I have a son, so we just really talked about how we discovered over time that the community really gets engaged when they talk about being a good parent and being a parent and really loving your child and giving them a good situation and all the great things that your child does. So those sort of topics that relate to parenting really start to engage people. So it's not always immediately uh, clear, but understanding the community and, and all the ways that your brand or nonprofit impacts that person is, is absolutely critical. And presumably as well, if you have a clear understanding of what their problems and needs are, your ideal customer might actually Google those kind of phrases and you can optimize your content accordingly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you uh, a, a little mind trick that uh, works for me, maybe because I have a simple mind, is um, you know to, to actually picture a person, an actual customer or an actual donor that you know, you know them personally, and write a blog post to that person. Think of the most common question that they have and just answer that question as if they're sitting right in front of you in second person. You know, that's that's the other thing that I, I think is uh, not immediately apparent about, con about creating content. Um, a lot of people that create content, they might um, have written, uh, you know, a thesis in college. I mean, that, that's the experience of writing content, but content on the web is very different. Um, it's very personal in a lot of ways. Even though social media is public, it's interesting because we consume it very privately. We we're looking at our iPhone. It's me. It's not a group of my friends looking at my iPhone. Generally speaking, I'm, it's one-on-one -on -one with the laptop, one-on-one -on -one with the phone, one-on-one -on -one with the iPad. So the content has to be very personal and say, you, why are you, second person narrative, and talk in those terms. Those, that's much more convincing. Right at the top of the content, you know, the opener should, be, should pose a question that, that um, communicates that there's going to be a benefit to this article. This is what I'm going to tell you. Do you have this problem? You probably, you probably struggle with this stuff all the time. I'm going to show you how to solve it. Dun, 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 dun. And, that, and that's it. You know? That's a really great tip. So, to uh, if you're doing any kind of content, whether it's a blog post or a video, so a powerful technique. What you're saying is to basically outline the problems in the form of a question, uh, mm -hmm. and then I, I suppose that would actually get them uh, consciously or subconsciously to actually go yes. And your idea is to try and get them to say yes, so they uh, open themselves up to what you have to say, presumably. Yep. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. And shall we go into a bit more about the different parts of the brain and maybe what parts you're trying to target and all that kind of stuff? Shall we go into that? You know, I mean, it's it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. This brain science stuff is actually pretty easy. Um, no, uh, no, I don't, no. Seriously though, there. Um, you know, one thing that I've read, which is a, kind of a mind, a brain, a, a mind blower, a mind opener, a brain opener, whatever you want to call it, is uh, that that uh, that we really behave for the most part. We we make decisions and we take action based on unconscious. Unconscious or emotional impulses, those are both basically the same. And there's a part in the brain called the, the limbic system, which is this very deep part of the brain where, you know, anger and awe and, like, emotion is very emotional. And in that same area of the brain um, is, is also where people um, act, where kind of action is triggered. And there's so many amazing ex um, brain experiments that really prove that we do think unconsciously first. There's something deeply unconscious that's going on and that triggers the action. Usually it's emotional. So that's why, and, and, and you, you know, you know this and, and most people in marketing know that people take action based on emotion first and then they justify it with logic and higher brain functioning. Oh, because they don't want to get in trouble. Okay? You buy the iPad, or the huge flat screen TV, the plasma TV, you come home, who's who's there? Your wife <laughs> or husband or whoever it is. And they say, why did you get this flat screen TV? That's crazy. I can't believe you bought this. Well, honey, it's this dimension in our eyesight and will help us. And it, You justify it that because you have to, <laughs> you know, mm. to yourself and others. But really our, our, our motivations are primarily emotional. So... Uh, some content-related tips around that. Um, photos of individual people do really well. Okay, um, people people on the internet generally respond to people, pictures of people, better than they would respond to, say, a diagram or a chart. Just as a as a general statement. And so, with an individual person, there you're making that deeper connection with them. And speaking in second-person narrative, you're kind of drawing them in. So there's this you know, kind of almost personal, and there's there's a lot of uh, studies around that about, in my world in fundraising, they've shown that if you say, hey, there are 100,000 people starving in Africa, we got to help them, nobody's, very few people will make a donation, right? Hmm. But if you say, hey, this girl right here, her name is Mary, she will die if you don't give us money. <laughs> then people are like, wow, I'm going to help her? That's it. Ah, oh, I want to. I want to help her. The hundred thousand people starving, hunger. That's so abstract. We don't connect with it. It's not meaningful to us at all. Because, mm -hmm. you know, that number, that those, that kind of information was meaningless back when our brain was being formed. We're, we're just not. We're not really wired to to put that kind of information as a priority, right? We we put emotion and threats and opportunities and fear and anger, these are the emotions that drive um, consumer behavior. And we've known this for a long time anyhow, but, but brain scientists are just really starting to say that this is, this is kind of the fundamental thing. Like, you know, it's really about the unconscious and the emotions really where it's at and about attention, how you get people's attention and keep it. Um, and so just a couple of quick tips on... Uh, what we said so far in terms of attention. If you have a landing page on your website where you want to have someone complete a transaction, get rid of the sidebar, right? The sidebar, that is just, oh, the latest block, and then they're off, okay? A landing page, no sidebars, and lead them right down the path where they need to go. Attention is precious when you have it. It is precious. The fact that they're even on your landing page is a miracle, quite frankly. It's a miracle. You want to make the most of that. Lead them down step by step what you want them to do and then, um, you know, convert. And then, of course, you can measure conversions at that point. But generally speaking, uh, the conversion uh, research also says remove the sidebar, you know, uh, and funnel people certain ways through, through a funnel, through a lead funnel. This is awesome stuff. I mean, there's a there's a, a lot here that uh, you've given us so far. And I think that, um, just to recap for the purpose of the audience, so there's 
um, a part in the brain called the limbic system, which is responsible <laughs> for emotion and behavior. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to trigger that part. And what I'm getting from you, and I think uh, we also teach this as well, is that people are inherently visual. Um, mm -hmm. And they want to see images, uh, relevant images, or thought-provoking, or emo emotion-provoking kind of images. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the example that you used there. Um, about you know about basically helping people uh, starving children for example um, mm. I think that from our experience that a lot of people uh, would like to create uh, images uh, but mm -hmm. they might not know what kind of tools are out there what kind of tools do you use yourself John in terms of mm. uh, creating images or adding text to images and things like that oh there's some really great tools I mean Photoshop I love Photoshop Elements it's only ninety nine dollars I think a US um, and then uh, PicMonkey.com is almost, you could describe it as the free online version of Photoshop. It's an online image editor. And you could, you could do a lot of things. Um, I mean, there are a lot of great tools out there. Um, I think it's important for me to just say that it's, it's, it's a mistake to say, oh, this is about the images and, and really the content itself. It's actually a little bit deeper than that. It's, understand, it's, act, it's understanding why that works and what the, st what the stories are. And uh, there's also, um, you know, other elements that go into the whole brain science thing, like, like social proof, right? So that's why testimonials are really critical. So it's not just about, not just about images and getting them, editing them a certain way, but there's a lot of other things like, like social proof. Testimonials, um, your friends, have, this is what's brilliant about Facebook. There are e-commerce platforms that will show you, or, or you do have the ability to do this, to say, hey, your friends like this, or your friends bought this or something like that and then recommending those products and services to um, you know potential customers absolutely that's great I am aware that uh, we are running out of time uh, but for the purposes of the audience don't forget mm -hmm. that we will have some show notes where we're going to actually link to some of John's uh, other bits of content because John has written mm -hmm. some great blog posts uh, which will go into some of this stuff in a lot more detail plus there's some other stuff that we've not had a chance to go through like the halo effect mm -hmm. I will really recommend that you read some of this stuff because it will help you and your business to stand out put out those purple cows and mm -hmm. get some really good customers in but John uh, just to wrap up then what's one thing then for the Chemia takeaway or the mm -hmm. Chemia workout What's one thing that you would encourage people to do uh, right now that they could ha impact their business? Um, get on with the customer and say, why did you do business with me? Why, why do you keep doing business with me? You know, and understand that customer. That's that's the first thing. Um, uh, uh, another thing you could do is you can do uh, use Facebook graph search to look at your customer or your at least your Facebook fan base and I do have an article as well that uh, will show you how to analyze an email list using uh, Facebook graph as well and the power editor it's a video that I have uh, if you send me an email I'll, I'll give it back to you for the show notes also we, we can put that in the in the show notes that's fantastic yep. that's fantastic so John where can people find you online Oh, if you just go to johnhayden.com, H-A-Y-D-O-N.com, or just Twitter, at John Hayden. Awesome, awesome. Well, John, thank you very, very much for that really interesting insight into content mm -hmm. marketing and also the brain science. I know there's so much we could talk about this for hours and hours and hours, but we don't have the time, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. maybe that'll be for a future show. But thank you very much, everybody, for watching us. We hope that you have found it useful. Remember, check out the show notes. There'll be a lot of great stuff in there. Do go and check out John Hayden uh, online. You know, he's got a lot of great stuff out there. We are big fans of it at Chemia. Remember, you can always join me for Haroon's Hangout every Wednesday, 10 a.m. usually, Greenwich Meridian time, where we make digital marketing simple, straightforward, and fun. But from me, Elmo, the Minions, and John Hayden, take care, sports fans. Great. Thank you.